Captain's Log, Episode 74. This week's episode of the Beer Avengers Podcast is sponsored by the Beer and Cheese Collective, located at 35-11 Dittmars Boulevard in Astoria, Queens. Enjoy their eclectic array of craft beer, artisanal cheeses, and specialty grocery items at the Beer and Cheese Collective. On this week's special post-St. Patrick's Day beer cast, Captain Huck and the Beer Wonders share five pours and talk about all things Ireland. Or at least all things we know. Or maybe all things we remember. It gets a little hazy near the end. We also recap Captain of the Beer Wonders' trip to Grim Artisanal Ales to experience the unique phenomenon known as brulee beer, talk a little about beer and cinema, and briefly touch on the seeming ubiquity of Boilermaker specials. Remember to like, star, and subscribe whenever that feels appropriate. And send us your emails at thebeervengers at gmail.com if you have any questions, suggestions, or if you just like hearing us talk about you on the show. And now... Without further ado, please enjoy episode 74, Aaron Go Beer. Well, with a beer, 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 Avengers, beer, 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 Avengers, beer, 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 Avengers. With a beer, Avengers. Yeah. Welcome to the beer cast, everyone. Coming to you from an undisclosed location in Astoria, Queens. I am Captain Porter Brown Stout. And coming to you from an undisclosed location in Fresno, California, this is the Pale Male Hophead Huck. And coming to you from an undisclosed location in that county of kings, it is I, the Beer Wonder. And we are... The The Beer. Beer... That was yeah. pretty. That was all that was. That was, uh, it was a little very nice and zen. Very, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, we haven't melodic. seen anyone. Yes, melodic, melodic, uh, and atonal at the same time. And occasionally, it's uh, all over the map. We're finding all sorts of things about ourselves. Welcome to the show, Beer Avengers out there uh, listening to us right now. Uh, we, we do this for you and for us. Uh, really good to be back. Uh, you might have heard us a little more recently. We haven't been doing this in the same room together in about when well, in the same room. Um, in or we're in separate rooms in a virtual room together. First time in about a month, isn't that right, guys? Yeah, I believe so. It's been a moment. It's been a moment. Yeah, it's uh, it's, the people it's, need it's their content, now. and we got to deliver it. <laughs> they are. They are now that uh, now that the weather is kind of inching into being spring. It says it's spring on the calendar, mm-hmm. but uh, not uh, fully committed just yet. But we're getting there. Um, so, uh, we're springing into our, uh, last, uh, podcast of March, uh, and then we'll be going into April because that's the way the calendar works and we can't do it backwards. We could try. I mean, it would be, well, I guess, <laughs> well, what would you do? You'd have to start recording like 12 months in advance. Sure. And say like you started recording in December, but called it January and then released it in right. January. We got to do one January, of those like. Yeah, oh, maybe we do. Maybe one of those like Richard Linklater things, like Boyhood, where we just yeah. record an episode a year and don't re- don't don't release any of it until like ten years from now, right? And then you just release it monthly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, wait, or backwards. You see, it's it's or yearly. This is some memento nonsense going on here. Well, what we yeah. could do is do thematic episodes, like in uh, in January we do a Christmas episode. And then oh, in go. February, we do a Thanksgiving episode. And then in March, we do a Halloween episode. You see where I'm going? Oh, I do. I do. Because each one, we're just sort of like, okay, we don't have a specific season for you right now, but let's just, let's do Christmas in here. Let's do Halloween here. Yeah. And July will line up as July, I think. Exactly. It would be, you could do 4th of July on the 4th of July. Look at that. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyway, uh, this is like too much for me uh, without a beer in my hand. So I think uh, I think we need to get to the poor guy, don't you think? Honestly, that's yeah. accurate right there. That's that's the truth. All right. Well, you all were so kind. And last time, let me go first that I just think it's going to be polite that we, we spread this joy around. Um, anybody anybody feeling feeling the, the beer venture gods calling to them? 
Well, I, I feel that like since since he hasn't he has not has not uh, broken any etiquette yet, and 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 he's being very good. Uh, I think I think this time we should actually let Huck go first. Well, I, I think it's a great idea. It would only be polite. Lovely. I mean, that's positive reinforcement, right? It is. He yes. gets look. We, he gets a beer. He gets a beer. That's how this works. Yeah. Give me a little treat. Well, I do have a nice treat here. Uh, I got a, a new brewery. Not new Ooh. to the world, but to the podcast. This is Bike Dog Brewing Company. Oh my gosh! Look at that. Wait, is is its logo literally a dog that has like feet that are bike wheels? Is he riding the bike? Yeah. What is, is happening he here? Bike? Yeah, he's a bike dog. He's like a superhero, you know. It's like you don't ride the bike; the bike is the the animal. Oh, okay. So it, it I'll is. I have to do some more like, research on right. that because I just bought this today. But, okay, uh, good. <laughs> it's called uh, "When We Ride, Baby." When we oh, ride, yeah. and it's a lovely West Coast uh, style IPA, uh, and it is, I believe, made with. Uh, uh, I'll have to check the hops in a second, but it's nice, uh, piney, and like I said, West Sacramento. California bike dog. This is my first bike dog. Ooh. Never had one before. And I've got myself a old school story of beer and cheese glass. Here we go. Oh, oh my gosh. Man. Look at that. Oh, it's got oh, that, that is, cool uh, yellowy, crispy color. Very I piney. can't tell if it's tawny or, or not is especially it, what, what, what uh, not getting a whole lot of head right away, which is interesting. Yeah. But we'll see how that goes. Sometimes with a, with a higher ABV, it's not as much of a head. There you go. I believe it's about eight percent. So, oh wow! Enjoy, again. Uh, gentlemen. Let's see that can again. Yeah, I, that that green and uh, green and uh, it's like a green and yellow color, and the logo is so cool. I would actually get that yeah. logo on a shirt. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah I'll have to, if I go if I go up to Sacktown, we'll have to I'll have to check that out. Yeah, yeah. The important Excellent. good research. And all right, uh, well, please. Um, well, Captain, I got to. I got to be honest, I'm a little embarrassed. Yeah. Like, yeah. this one kind of feels like, you know, it's like when you show up to the party and you're both wearing the same dress and it's like, who wore it better? Because, uh, well, like, yeah. we coordinated, but kind of today. And it's it's like, it's a little awkward. Um, so maybe why don't you reveal to the people what's going on and then I can I can sort of, you know, fill in my All section right. of this. Full disclosure, yeah. it is, we're recording this on... March 21st, 2023, which is four days after St. Patrick's Day. Um, they had a big festival at the Beer and Cheese Collective uh, celebrating that and uh, wanted to sort of extend that celebration. So went over to the other day, the provider, and gave me this wonderful beer from, uh, I think it's pronounced Lockgill, although I wanted to say Lothgill when I saw it. Uh, but, it's yeah. a log, uh, but it is uh, from, from the Republic of Ireland, so oh. not the... Not the occupied part. Uh, it is. Uh, it is. Uh, the name of the beer is Dark Magic, spelled M A J I K. Uh, I don't know if that is a uh, if that a uh, uh, Gaelic way of of, of print spelling it, but it is an imperial oatmeal coffee cream stout at eleven percent. Oh, so let's sweet. just and let's just, let's just remind the people that it is indeed a sponsored pour. That's right. It's a sponsored pour from the Beer and Cheese Collective. I, uh, you know, I was telling the story about how the provider gave it to me. I did a light over that. So thank you for keeping me honest. I, I just, we got to make sure, you know, we got to make sure that the provider is getting the, her due and that, you know, we're, we're continuing our sponsorship package. All right. So here we go. Oh, dear. Dark. Oh, it almost looks a little reddish to my eye. Oh, it does. We are got, here. We're seeing some clear. Oh, yeah. Like the Irish red coming out of there. Mm -hmm. There nice, we go. Nice, nice, fluffy head. Mm -hmm. There we go. Very pretty, and also they they do have this trend on their cans to have this sort of wavy line, uh, yeah. can art on it. It looks like. And is there what's behind that circle on there? Is there an animal there for you? Uh, I oh yeah, I, I, you mean between the lock and the gill? Uh, well, I yeah, was thinking I more behind behind the wavy lines. There's some some kind of like pattern. Yes. Well, to me, it almost looks like it's a like a ship's wheel. Oh, okay. Because yeah, like you see three on top and three on the bottom mm -hmm. here. Okay, isn't it? What do you think? That, tra that, that tracks for me. I just couldn't tell because, um, perhaps to the shock of nobody, I also have a sponsored core. Yes, and uh, and it is also from our friends at uh, Lock 
Gill Brewing Company or Loft Gill Brewing Company. That's I'm right. sure we'll find out later how it's pronounced. Uh, mine has That'd a similar a can art, but my uh, 100%. And mine is called the McNutty Macadamia Nut Brown Ale. And behind the little waves, I have a squirrel. I don't know if you can oh, see there him. There's a squirrel. Oh, yeah. See his tail down there? Yeah, he's that squirrely is a up squirrel. There. And yeah, and mine is like, so yeah, mine is, I'm pretty sure it's a, it's a ship's. Ship that, it's that ship absolutely wheel, tracks. Yeah. Yep. But other than um, that, they, uh, they, they uh, unlike some of the uh, American breweries where they have entirely different designs, they still with the same base pattern with some slight differences for the different beers. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this one is a uh, brown ale brewed with real macadamia nuts that they're roasted in their own kitchen, along with top quality malts to give a rich, nutty flavor and luxurious dark brown color. And I do want to mention that on the can, they do spell both flavor and color with the um, extra U, a la, you know, the as the is Brits and Canadians and Irish are wont to do. It's their, it, it's their favorite spelling. It is. It is. Uh, it's also it's a, a U in it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. See, it all, fit, it all fits. Well, I'm going to crack this open because I'm excited. Uh, oh, yeah to see how macadamia nuts show up in this beer. Oh, it's leaping out of the can. A real craft brewery over there in Ireland. I'm looking at the beer Mm -hmm. selection. They are independently run. Oh oh dear. It's it's very alive. It's jumping right out of the can. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's Yeah, the provider was telling me they they do can this beer in Ireland. So this is just like we have with our friends at uh, we when we experienced at uh, uh, Delirium Tremens, this is this is uh, canned there and brought and imported here. Oh, there you go. It's a lo- quite quite an impressive head there. Yes, there's a lot of head happening. We're gonna we're gonna let that die down and put some more in. But I can actually smell the macadamia nuts already, so I'm excited cool. about this one. All right, there you go. All right, beautiful. Oh, such gorgeous cans. You're gonna have to check the Instagram to see these. Of course. All right. All right Cheers, beer Avengers. Cheers. It's very, this is, this is unique. This is, uh, it's definitely different than, uh, a lot of the American Imperial Stouts that I have. It, uh, it's not, it's, it's not, doesn't, doesn't bowl you over with a huge body, but there's still a whole lot of flavor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it did pour thinner than a beer that I have seen you drink before. And also at 11, what I would expect from an American brewery pouring something yeah. that's 11%. I expect it to be a little bit more like, more like motor oil. And yours was this like reddish kind of yeah. flowy liquid, which was really cool. Yeah, it's, uh, at least it, it's a, it's a yeah, coffee cream stout. So, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, yeah. It's a, and I, I, another thing of these cans are at a 14.9 ounce cans. Yeah, they're a little oh. shorter. Then they're a little short. I was putting them next to the tall boys in my fridge and they were a little bit shorter, uh, which is kind of cool. Actually, I'll, I have a tall boy right here just for comparison. You can see yeah. there's like a height difference, a little a bit height difference, yeah, there. just the slightest bit, but it's uh, but it's noticeable. It's like if you, if you put you can get these in New York, yeah, uh, I agree. Uh, and interestingly enough, I, I have had this brewery at least two more times before. Once was at uh, the Beer and Cheese Collective, uh, about four or five years ago when they were under a different name. And also I got one at the blind tiger. Uh, mm. Really? Uh, it was called, uh, it was called something about track suits or something, <laughs> <laughs> which uh, I, I just think is, it, it, it's, called, it's called no track suits. <laughs> that uh, 12, and that, that, that one was a 12% Imperial stout. So yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess wear the track the, pants. Is that all right? Uh, also like if you take off your sh- shirt, like if you're, if you're doing one, one piece of a track suit, that's fine, but no full track suits. Okay. It's just uh, exactly. overdoing it. It's gauche, I think is what the kids mm-hmm. are saying. Yes. The um, kids well, say gauche all the time. Clearly, naturally. Um, I don't like to say gauche cause gauche means left. And, uh, I try not to use it anymore when, since I learned that cause I'm gauche left-handed. So I, I'm means left? by the word. Yes. In French. Oh. Yes, and, do- and so essentially black- meaning wrong. Right. Oh, I see. You know, because everybody's right-handed. Correct. You southpaw, you. Yeah. <laughs> now I now I'm the one being rude. How's how's how is the how's the bike dog? You know, it's it's okay. It's got uh, you know, it's old school, West Coast style, but there's it's it's not super flavorful in my mm-hmm. opinion. Um, it's made with three different hops, Eldorado, uh, Citra, I think, uh, 
Eldorado Simcoe and Citra, which mm. should pump it up, but it's uh, not getting a whole lot of hoppiness. It's very drinkable. Like it's going to be yeah. easy. It's easy drinking for 7.1%. Uh, but it's, I mean, I'm not blown away. I don't want to okay. insult okay. the folks at Bike Dog. This is my first Bike Dog. So, but you know how I am. I yes, we do. Uh, yeah, we I'm a beer that, critic. That, that, we are, we are, we are uh, boosters, but not uh, blind supporters of everything. Right. We're not yeah. sycophants. We are. Not. We're not bullshitters. Right word? Uh, so I, I, you probably said this, and I didn't hear you, and I apologize. Uh, but is that? Uh, did you say that? Was, is that a, like an IPA, a West Coast IPA? A West Coast style, yeah. Oh, okay. So it, it does have that that West Coast vibe. Um, but you know what? I'm looking at at. Uh, at uh, Untapped, and their beers get good ratings. So I, I'm almost feel like maybe something in the canning. Yeah, but it has because hmm. you saw that the head wasn't too big though. It has good, nice looking lacing. On yeah, there. nice lacing there. And the yeah, head it's is beautiful. still staying alive. Excuse me, but maybe it's just not their their best one. I don't know. I'll have to try another bike dog. Yeah, I'm finding with the with the dark magic, it's uh, it's it's definitely it's got a sweetness that's not overbearing. Very much taste the raisin for the uh, for the oatmeal uh, cookie kind of thing in there. In fact, uh, Henry at uh, at beer and cheese was telling telling me that uh, that he he just he he can't drink this beer because it tastes too much to him like rum raisin ice cream. Uh-huh. Oh, and okay. he just doesn't like rum raisin ice cream and has that flavor but uh also acknowledging that he's very much a minority because everyone was really enjoying this one they were doing a uh, special uh pairings over the weekend with irish cheeses and soda breads Ooh. and these beers oh so, nice yeah well there uh you guys had your pronunciation right as far as i can oh tell. we do good on lock. glad to hear it lock and that, it is it I, is I take absolutely no credit for that. lock yeah he's like I take no mm-hmm. credit for that. Beer, Beer Wonder looked that up uh, before we started recording. Oh, good job. Show you a little yeah, bit I tried to, sausages I made tried, there. I tried to unhuck myself up in advance because, yeah. you know, I, I like to try to avoid that. I like to try to avoid that. Um, and I got to say uh, this. Oh, please. I was going to say it's really lovely. It's a very smooth, very easy drinkable brown ale, really malt forward. So I'm getting lots of caramel, mm. a lot of decent chocolate. Very nutty. Um, I smell the macadamia a little more than I taste the macadamia, I think. But okay. it is, like, overall very nut heavy. Like, there's just a lot of nuttiness that's coming through. So I don't know quite where all that's coming from, whether it's the malt or the, uh, or the macadamia nuts. But it's really good. And I did just double check. Uh, this has won two awards from the, Dul- the Dublin Craft Beer Cup in 2017 and 2018. This was a silver medalist in 2017 and a bronze medalist in 2018. Um, so that's kind of cool. Clearly a, a loved uh, beer amongst our Irish beer craft beer drinking compatriots um so yeah would drink many of and at 5.5 percent, i feel like one could drink many of these that's great i love to see the irish craft beer being uh promoted you know because when you think irish you know i like mm-hmm. Guinness, you know but like oh yeah they kind of dominate the market over there uh you have murphy stout is another one if you're in the south you drink murphy's uh and in the north you drink not the north north but the regular not like Northern the Ireland. Regular North. Ireland. North Ireland. <laughs> North North Republic of Ireland. If you're, if you're in Dublin, you drink Guinness. If you're in County Cork, you drink Murphy's. That's my understanding. Uh, and over there, beer just tastes better. But Yeah, and I guess if you're in Sligo or Sligo, I don't know how that's I think it's Sligo, uh, but yeah. Sligo? Okay. Sligo, yeah. That's, you drink this, apparently. I, I looked into yeah, the town yeah. of Sligo. Apparently, there had historically been five craft beer breweries in this tiny little town. All of them, of mm-hmm. course, have gone away with age. And so as this one came back in oh. 2016, they were one of the first craft breweries to come back in. Or f- first breweries, craft, of course, to come back into that part of Ireland. So keeping the brewing oh, tradition sweet. alive. Um, has anybody done the, the like, go to Ireland, have a Guinness where it's made thing? Oh, yes. yeah, I, I did. Yeah, 2008 okay. for me. Yeah, I think I was in 20, uh, I want to say 15, 14 or 15. Oh, wow. I'd never been to Ireland, you know, pretty Irish. And uh, as Irish Americans go, I uh, saw some stat the other day that the the Irish Americans outnumber uh, actual Irish people by like 
five hundred percent or something. It's like wow. oh wow, the 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 amount of Irish people of Irish descent around the world compared to what in Ireland is like a, just a massive number. Yeah. Um, so that's me. You know, I'm seven eighths Irish. Not, not only not only did so many people from come over there, but at the time they came over for quite a while, uh, they were a little more paid a little more attention to those no contraception rules. So that's another reason why there's so many of them here. I would think <laughs> that is yeah. true. I do. That come is from true. A, I have five people in my family. Um, my father's family is also five. My mother, uh, her family is seven kids. So of course I have none. So I'm breaking the uh, breaking the chain there. Everything is ruined. And kill, killing the name of, I, see, I bleeped my last name. Killing the name of Hopper Duck. <laughs> As our Irish representative, though, I would love to know your thoughts on this holiday, this very important beer drinking holiday that we just passed. Yeah, well, I actually worked on the holiday on our beer job where I did two events uh, and had two beers. And, uh, and then I was going to go out and I just didn't. It was a Friday night. And it's St. Patrick's Day. So that's like a double negative almost for old people. Um, <laughs> because like in New York, we call it amateur hour, right? Uh, you know, right. Like people that only go out and get wasted on St. Patrick's Day or Santa Con or something like that. And most of them uh, aren't, don't even live within the city limits. They're coming from like Jersey and Long Island and et cetera. Of course, I'm here in Fresno, so it probably would have been fun anyway to go out. I know the place I was going to go was pretty crowded, but... Uh, you know, I prefer going on a Wednesday. Well, a Thursday has kind of been my night out lately. Anyway, getting off topic, St. Patrick's Day. I've never been a big, like, fan of the day of the... I've gone to some parties. I've definitely partied on St. Patrick's Day, but generally, it's not, like, an important thing to me. I know uh, Nutpool is a big uh, proponent of the holiday. I'm surprised. Did he, yeah. a, did, he, did he have a party? Not that I'm aware of. If he did, we weren't invited. No, he. I. I I think he may have celebrated uh, more more privately this year. Um, He and I had discussed potentially doing something, but I don't think that came to fruition. So you know, say what you will about Nutpool. I've actually been to his house for a couple of St. Patrick's Days uh, in recent years, uh, which was nice. But uh, you know, I've always been kind of not. I don't want to say anti-Irish, but kind of like give me a break, Irish. Like especially with Irish Americans, because I'm like, you're from Worcester. Okay, calm down. (laughs) <laughs> you're not Irish. my dad used to go on about my dad like god love him he's a great guy uh uh he's got the same name his name is uh, uh, me and uh well well it's not i i got the name from him i guess he had it first but anyway uh he's 100 percent irish okay all he could track uh all of his ancestry to the island and he actually oh. knows where he comes from you know he's got the family tree uh uh, so he's really on top of that. And uh, so he's always like, oh, Ireland. Oh, I, I'm Irish. I'm, you know, it's like, no, you're not. But I mean, he could get Irish citizenship. You know, yeah. you could do oh, that wow. now if you have because uh, his grandfather was born in Ireland. So that's like because uh, the Irish want more people. They're like, we got to get more people here. <laughs> they don't have as many as they uh, as they once did. Um, so. I could actually go for it myself. I suppose you have to you have to live there for a little while, but I don't know. I would, I would, because I did go when I said uh, I told you I went in 2015, and I I absolutely loved it there, and I I just I got it, you know, like hmm. I, my whole life I didn't get it, like okay Irish, yeah we're Irish, okay great, but when I went there I was like, oh I get it, <laughs> like you see the weather I'm like this is why I look like this. <laughs> and you just the feeling there is like the people are just so nice and just real friendly and fun mm-hmm. and i'm just like this is a great place and beautiful it's it's absolutely great and it's green you yeah. say like oh what uh, uh, oh where in the green it's freaking green man this place is green there's a you ever heard of connemara, connemara marble connemara I, marble i've heard of connemara i didn't i didn't know about the marble no, I didn't okay, know about the marble. Is, there's this marble that comes from Connemara. Mm-hmm. And guess what? Guess what it looks like? It's green. Is it green? It's green. <laughs> I mean, it's bright green, this marble. There's supposed to be a place, the, the city hall of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, 
has the uh, uh, their their inside is uh, their their courtrooms or their 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 council chambers. What it's the most Connemara marble in one building in the world, and so I, I'd love to see that because going there was like you just like As this stuff comes from underground. It's not it, it's it's bright green anyway. So I like Ireland and going to uh, the Guinness factory. You did this too, uh, mm-hmm. Captain, right? Yes. What a good time that is. Even if you're not a beer drinker, I just thought it was just so fun going yeah, through the great museum. Great view of the city, too, because it's like really it. you, high up. You go through the museum and you go up to the top of it and you, you get a you get a, a proper pint poured for you. And you oh, have nice. this view of Dublin um, and they teach you how to properly taste uh, a Guinness, which I which I incorporate in my in my beer tastings. As you um, should. Generally, when we do the uh, online thing. So anyway. God love them. Love the Irish. Love Ireland. And then and then Martin McDonough Irish. Martin McDonough came along and ruined it all for you with Banshees of Inisherin. Oh, oh Mark, Martin! <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh goodness. May, 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 I, I know it probably hit a little too. You know what you are? You're not nice. <laughs> yeah. He's quoting the movie. <laughs> you used to be nice. You know what you are now? Not nice. Yeah. <laughs> watch it I'll, I'll watch it again it takes place on the Aran islands which is also another place to visit yeah uh, incredible and they speak irish there they like uh presumably the people in that movie who are speaking english the characters speak english they would yeah. presumably mm-hmm. be speaking irish and unquestionably because that's on those islands and this is the 20s right yeah when yeah. the movie took place so they would have been speaking irish i believe I bet Martin McDonough himself doesn't speak Irish. Yes, yes, I, yeah. Sometimes we call it Gaelic here, but yes, right. Irish we used to Gaelic call it Gaelic when way. I was a kid, and it's like, well, it's actually just Irish, right? Because there's different kinds of Gaelic. Well, that's what I noticed when I was there. Like there, they they specifically just call it Irish, but uh, most Americans usually refer to it as Gaelic. And they have to teach it in schools now. Oh, well. as a student, that's one way to keep to it alive. It. And it's on the and now it's on uh, road signs as well. So they're really trying to bring it back because it was stripped from them by the English. What about Northern Ireland? Never been. Well, no, because this was the strange thing because, you know, Aer Lingus flies to both of them, I think. And when I flew into Dublin, they did make all the announcements in both English and Irish. But Mm -hmm. I heard that they were not allowed to do that in Belfast. I'm sure they don't do it there. I mean, I, I don't think they do. Well, you got me going on a tangent there, uh, Beer Wonder. I, no, well, hey, it's a good tangent, especially as our resident, as our resident Irish uh, connected person, because I have none of that in my veins. I was just going to hang back and let you guys do the show, and now I've, I've done all the talking. I uh, I always forget the percentage, but I have a significant chunk chunk of uh, well, they call it English or Irish. Uh, that's how they sort of lump it together in twenty three and Me. It's like one of my chunks is English Irish, and the other chunk is French German, but. It's always good to know what your chunks are, isn't it, Captain? Yeah, but I know it's like it's a. <laughs> I, I, but th- those are the two. Well, yeah, I mean, I've got a little bit of African in there too, but I think everyone does because colonialism. Yeah, racism <laughs> sucks, y'all. Um, let's not do yeah. more of that. So hey, let's th- let's make that announcement here on uh, officially. Yes, uh, exactly. The beer vendors, the beer vendors have declared racism. We did yeah. it on, on the first episode uh, oh, talking that's true. about uh, you know uh, our, our our main tenets, uh, most of which still apply. Uh, yeah, but also yeah, but of, also racism bad. Although uh-huh. I never, I never wear a mask, so I don't me neither. But but uh, so well, that, I'm still all, doing it. But you know, I, 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 I mostly ask, like I've been asked in a while. Yeah. yeah, I mostly do it on the subways, and you know, if I'm like going into a crowded grocery store. Um, but yeah, things are loosening up. Things are getting better, yeah. which is good. Yes, I don't judge you so, negatively for that. Yeah. Uh, well, there you go. See, well, but one place though, the captain and I were not wearing a mask recently, uh, was a, uh, a very sacred New York city event, uh, that celebrates the great brewers here in Gotham. Captain, do you want to tell the people about what we were up to? Yeah. Well, uh, when, when we last, uh, talked to you, we were talking about how we were making plans to go to the big, uh, kickoff for the mm-hmm. New York city, New is it? Yeah. The New York city beer week run, but, and, uh, sponsored by the New York city brewers guild. And they put together this whole event in Industry City, uh, also combined with the other half's Pastry Town Festival. They were like oh, mashed together. It was, uh, it was wild. Yeah. 
Yeah, and they were. Uh, it's one of those things where I always go in there thinking I want to taste everything, and then uh, I realize by the end it's a fraction of what they have because I have to like you have to just pick favorites more than anything else. Oh, the fact that they that, combined them is amazing. Yeah, it was and, truly insane. And apparently, one of the, one of the things that's uh, big uh, at uh, Pastry Town is every year they have wrestling. So that was included in this oh, as well. Yeah. Like you had all these booths with with all the beer, and then in one corner there's an actual wrestling ring with a ref and uh, body slams and all of that. And it was, uh, in fact, it, it, it's still I, th- I believe we still have that on our Instagram uh, feed if you want to see a brief brief uh, glimpse of us uh, talking about that. Yeah. Yes, I was. I'll be honest. I was very confused by all of that. I think oh, if yes. you watch my face on the Instagram, I just I didn't understand what was happening. You, you know? were rendered pretty much speechless by the whole thing. I don't think you were even able to say introduce yourself because you were so no. thrown by the 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 what was in the air. Yeah, it was just it, like I it was the thing where I was like, so uh, how does this connect? But anyway, it, it's not for me to understand. It's just for me to accept. And it did create an air of like energy in that space as people were drinking beer and watching people get slammed onto a wrestling ring, which was unexpected. I will say that much. (laughs) It's been a tradition since they started the uh, other half, Green City and Pastry Town, that they've always had wrestling. And I, 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 the connection is odd, but it's, 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 they've been consistent with it. Yeah, it was it, it was fun. <laughs> Had a good time. They had a lot of really good food there as well. Uh, was there an option to get of... in and wrestle with the? Uh... I, I mean, no. If there was, I think yeah. Not that <laughs> I was sign up of. sheet. <laughs> Well, after after you've had a few, I feel like that's where we cross that like line of questionability. But um, right. but hey, it was it was certainly fun to watch after we had had quite a few, and we did have quite a few. Captain, I'm curious if there were any uh, favorite um, breweries or beers or things that you just kind of wanted to highlight from uh, Oof, from our adventures. Uh, I did ask you to there take were so notes. Many. We did we did take some notes. We and did I had some okay. at the time, and I'm uh, I'm drawing a blank right now. <laughs> uh apologies for that i know the i know the some of those pastry town ones were fantastic from other half uh and jay wakefield had some that was specifically from mm-hmm. them because they had their own separate section of it uh but it's honestly there was so many great th- things i can't even boil it down but i know you uh had a you especially appreciated a new brewery that's there uh the harlem brewing yeah. Wow. Um, so I got into, I got to hang out and I have it as a prop because I will drink it at some point. Maybe we'll try and have them on because I know they were very interested. But uh, there is the um, the Harlem Brewing, which is uh, located in Harlem, but actually brews out of um, Ailmentary Brewing Company in Hackensack, New Jersey. So which is yeah. a place that we have enjoyed beers from. Um, I, they were sampling a couple of their beers uh, and I had, uh, I feel like frequently when we go to these events, I have like a revelatory experience with an IPA where I find one that I just really, really love. Um, and I usually wind up chatting up the brewer in whatever state I'm in. And then they send me home with some, which was lovely. And the same thing managed to happen here. So I want to call it out also because I really did love it. It's the 125th street IPA. It is a very piney, fairly bitter, um, really delicious kind of West Coasty IPA um, that I just thought was super fantastic. They say it's refreshing and juicy. I just get pine tree from it, but I love everything about it. This is like one of my ideal IPAs. And we met the brewer. Uh, we chatted with her for a little while. She gave both Captain and I some of their beers. Um, and it was That's just right. really yeah, cool. I'm, to- I'm not bringing a wit beer home from them. Yeah, um, but I just wanted to really call them out because what they're doing is so cool uh, and they're starting to get a little bit more like traction and distribution. Um, so it was like one of those beers that kind of knocked me off my socks and they've been around since 2000. So I'm mm-hmm. really, like, I don't okay. know, I don't know why I've missed them in all of that time. I don't know, Huck, if they, if you've experienced any of their stuff. Yeah, I did. I used to have the Sugar Hill. Uh, beer, oh, yeah. Uh, which is uh, Sugar Hill Ale. Mm-hmm. Um, because I've been to a couple. Of, I used to live up there, so mm-hmm. Sugar Hill Ale. Uh, it's a golden ale. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had it a couple of times. Yeah, it's a. Uh, it's pretty good. I remember that Harlem Brewing. Yeah, and I think they're they they might be associated with Harlem Hops a little bit in some way. Uh, that would make sense. They you know they know each other and and are uh, uh, colleagues. But uh, yeah, uh, nice brew. I'm glad to, I'm glad to hear they're uh, they're making a, a more of a splash. Yeah, I I was 
totally bowled over by it and i'm excited to continue to support them That's so black owned brewery yes yeah black owned brewery which is great um and also just really doing cool stuff so i'm um, hopefully maybe we'll have them on i know that when i spoke with the brewer she seemed pretty excited about it but of course you know when everyone is in the heat of things everyone's bubbly and excited but I'm just sending some major beer venture love out to you guys and knowing that um, that that this is one of my like go tos now whenever i can find it i know i'll be oh. snapping it up so uh that real huge fan. coming from the yeah. beer wonder mm-hmm. yeah really we also, great we, also, we also ran into some of our our friends there uh mm-hmm. ran into jared from sweet avenue uh it was good seeing yep. him again he, if you he was on a while back about a year ago uh yep. and also ran into dan uh from single cut who uh yep oh, spoiler alert you heard it here first he will be appearing on a show very soon uh we'll, we'll just have to get the details of that but you'll be hearing him hearing all about single cut and him uh, and also, uh, when we were at the strong route place, we ran into, uh, oh, yeah. uh our friend Aisha, who, uh, who's uh, manages mm-hmm. both of their tap rooms who used to work at the beer and cheese collective. So it's uh, a yeah. whole, our, uh, the, the whole beer community and a big part of our beer community all there together. Kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Great, uh, great. it was, it was quite the celebration and we did try to take notes on it a little bit. And if you head over to the Instagrams, you can see some videos of us as we get progressively drunker, um, yes, showing, talking watch, about yeah. s- yeah, talking about some of the beers that we uh, we were enjoying there, but it's always a great way to kind of bring the beer community in Gotham together, and it was fun to see it kind of come back. I know that it, you know, they had done these um, something that I participated in, but the way that they did Beer Week at the height of everything was they you could buy these boxes that were individual cans that were shipped to your home, um, so ah. you could test out all of these different beers. So it's nice to see as things subside, uh, people coming back and enjoying beer together, and and also they had I thought their tasting glasses were fairly large this year, and I always appreciate that yeah it's nice to have one that you can really feel like you can reuse because i i Mm -hmm. I always keep them with me uh and uh whenever i have my my tasting some people have like pint glasses but a lot of people are using these these taster glasses which is perfect for it well yeah captain when you're pouring like a dozen you know 14 percent beers some of us have got to take it slow some of us are not quite as skilled as you are no no i mean i I, i'm pouring small tastes into a bigger glass so it's like yes you you are are. it's it's also about sharing with everyone Mm -hmm. now when you're going to this now the main you say it was combined with pastry town was it two separate areas or were they were they sort of all meshed together they were two connecting areas so okay. it's like you there's a, a big room and then you'll uh, walk down some steps and then there's a, another room there and there were uh, you know there was a, a, a passage between the two. So and we're talking out- about with New York, New York Brewers Guild that area was at all of our New York mm-hmm. uh, breweries New York yeah. City or the state we're talking about. I think state. Uh, yeah, we, oh, okay. we were yeah. stretching the definitions of Gotham a little bit but in the best way. So Yeah, because they were history trending- town there from all over. Right. And so, yeah, so that's why the, the second, the se- se- but it was, it was all part of the same ticket though. There was no e- extra charge for it or anything else. It was all part of the, part of the same event, which was nice. So for the folks at home, when we talk about pastry town, they're talking about essentially mainly imperial pastry stouts. Oh yes. As well as, as pastry sours and just really heavy fruited and chocolatey <laughs> high Goodness. alcohol yeah. beers. And they were not playing around. I mean, by the time we got to Pastry Town, which I'd say was probably an hour into the event, oh, um, man. Th- there were already four places that had run out of stuff. They're done. Um, yeah. They were just completely out. And people started pouring like from Magnums and just crazy. I was going to ask you about that to crazy stuff all throughout the event. I mean, it was just sort of like you would see this massive bottle come out and then all of a sudden this line would form and it was pretty, yeah. Oh yeah. Pretty you got to get yeah. in on the Magnums. Mm-hmm. I, we were lucky enough to get in on the Magnum at, um, uh, Rocktoberfest, uh, Blocktoberfest oh, nice. uh, a couple of years ago. Yes. At the other half booth, they brought a couple of Magnums. So were, were there, was there a lot of that or was it mainly other half that was pulling? Well, the, the main Magnum. one I remember is that we went to one for wild East and they had their yeah. schedule. They said, we're there at like four o'clock. Yep. We're going to have, have things here. Yeah. That's it a, was all listed. I don't remember yeah. what it was. Yeah. And did you see friends or people you knew from wild East over there? Uh, yeah, I believe, I believe so. so yeah. 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 I, I, I caught Holly, Holly might've been there. Mm-hmm. I think we saw Holly there. Um, Holly, and yeah. Yes. Yep. I think that that was the person we said hi to. Um, And uh, and there was another brewery and you're going to have to remind me of this one, Captain, because I enjoyed their beer, but was in an altered state by the time I got there. It the, is a brewery that is run by an Iranian woman. 
Um, oh yeah, uh, back home. Oh yeah, back home beer. Back home brewery. Um, they Talk were doing about that with the provider. Yeah, the provider yes. had beer there, and there was a wonderful um, salted beer that they had that was a part of their repertoire that I just thought was a really lovely, very refreshing um, beverage. Um, again, I had it much later in the experience, so we'll see how my senses were at that point. But uh, but I thought it was a really particularly wonderful beer, and was cool Generally, to see her working on yeah. stuff there. Generally, salted beers are that's 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 a theme for them uh, mm-hmm. because she says that when she was a child in Iran that uh, she would see the old men. They, they would actually literally put salt in their beers. So that's, that's a big part of why she specializes in Goza since that's an element yep. of that. Yeah. But it was, it was a really fun experience. Oh, uh, and then we did swing by another brewery um, at the, um, because it was the whole thing was in Industry City. We did cross the street and walked you we by did. the Big Alice Barrel Room and went upstairs to another brewery. Right. right. The Gun Hill Public House. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I don't, I have my, I'm, my memory is extremely hazy about that. We recorded well, Industry City right is a we great in, but... spot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even yes. remember that you sent your, your Harlem beer home with me, Beer Wonder. I like, I, oh, I yes. went up with two beers. Is one of these yours? And you said, yes, I gave it to you to give to me later. Well, okay, thanks. Uh, that's, yeah, yeah, I had to go somewhere afterwards. And so since you were going right. straight home, I just handed you my beers. Um, Let me ask you so. quick before you get to the, the Gun Hill. When you were at the uh, uh, festival, was there a closing time thing that went on where you had to get your last minute pours in or were you guys were fairly satisfied with the situation? Yeah, I, I, didn't, I, I, didn't, I didn't, didn't pull I, a, I a pale male move on that one. <laughs> a, uh, oh, what, what, what's the pale male move? You get out of get, here. Uh, get our last pours. Oh, oh, uh, Get him in. I think I made it longer this one than I have at a festival in a while. Uh, I would yes. say that like the last couple I've gone to, I wound up like leaving an hour early. This one, I think we stuck it out to the end. Uh, yeah, we, we, the, we had the B dubs to keep you afloat. Yeah. Yes, we did. Ha- we, we left about 15 minutes before the actual end of end of things. We had basically yeah. closed out Pastry Town. Let me rephrase that. Captain had closed out Pastry Town. Um, yeah. And I had gotten what I wanted out of New York, uh, the New York City crew, the New York crew. And so but we really wanted to go check out the Gun Hill um, room that's across the way. And so but because we knew that would get very crowded after everything was done, we bounced out about 15 minutes so that we were able to literally walk in, grab our beers and sit down before the thing got packed and it did get very packed which was great to see it was mm. fun to see people continuing to like support local breweries and support the area um but we we jumped out about 15 minutes before the event just to kind of be strategic and it worked yeah it definitely worked yeah because oh, after perfect. after we got into the uh to the public house we saw a lot of people starting to pour in there immediately afterwards yep. but we yeah. we had no trouble getting a seat very and much. how's the vibe but, there oh i'd say great I'd say great. Yeah, it was too. chill. I'm looking forward to going it, back. Yeah. It, I mean, we were, you know, we were, we'd had something to drink, so it'll be nice to go there and like take it in when you're like fresh it's at the beginning. Fresh. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. But it was great to have some old favorite beers and, um, you know, industry city is just such a cool place. You were saying Huck, it's just such a nice spot to grab a yeah. drink and grab some food and, and all that. And like and really chill out. Brew, brew houses there. That's nice. Oh yeah. Two, it's good stuff. Two tap houses. That's great. Yep. But speaking of pouring, I, I do think the, the, that Huck looks like uh, it's time for another pour. Yes. Now, when I went to the store today, I, I, you know, I was, I was, I was looking for something Irish like you guys have, but I found this beer that last year was one of my favorites, uh, which is from a brewery that I've already had twice on the show, but I love them so much. We're bringing them on a third Yo. time. This is Moonlight Brewing out of uh, oh. uh, out of uh, Santa Rosa, California. Right. We all. Oh, look at that. Moonlight. Yep. We do. It's such and a good this, can, too. Now, what's exciting about this is that it's called Dim Lights, and it's a gently smoked lager. So gently you know smoked. I love my smoky beers. Yes. This one. Rauschbier. I'm getting smoke. It says gently smoked, but it's got a nice smokiness. I had it last year. I don't know if they mm-hmm. put it out twice a year or once a year, but this is fresh, and it just came out. I think it's a date. is a February date on there, so uh, let's take a look. At this, ooh. Oh, wow. It's a light color, obviously, right away. One would hope. But it's got a, it's got a uh, unlike those Hulk beers we had in yes. Bomberg, which were very dark, this mm-hmm. has got that much lighter uh, lager vibe to it. It's also uh, not, it's not a, it's not a slouch. I think it's 6.5%. Okay. For a smoky lager. Let's give it a smell first, of course. 
the old sniff test. It's a beautiful looking beer. It is. Oh, I love it. I mean, I've had it before, but uh, I love it. Also, my Crow and Wolf glass, which is kind of a cool glass. It's out of uh, right here in uh, Clovis, California, uh, Crow and Wolf. But this, uh, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'm speechless. I love this beer. Excellent. Go well, on. I, open your second beer, Captain. I do. I've got one. And this this might uh, segue nice into our next section. Uh, okay. I, I, I don't think we do this quite often, but my second beer is also a uh, sponsored pour. I tried it. It's a sponsored pour from our friends at Grimm. Uh, this is an oatmeal oh. porter conditioned on vanilla beans. It's love is everywhere. Oh, oh romantic. Yeah, like, yeah, there's like a lovely little like drawing that like reminds Baltic? me of like, what's that? No, it, it's not a Baltic porter. It's an oatmeal porter. Oatmeal, excuse uh, me. Yeah, no, and the drawing of like sort of like things you see, not not explicitly so, but like kind of like the artwork you see on the Kama Sutra, that sort of thing. It's nice. Uh, Ooh. 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 I said it wasn't as explicit. <laughs> yeah, I know. But just I know. That, that style of line drawing uh, that I'm filmed with there. So, and uh, and and I'm doing something. I'm, I'm out of, out of out of character a little bit. I'm pouring into the same glass, so it might have to lose of that uh, oatmeal cookie from the other one in there. Their genre is similar enough. Oatmeal, oatmeal. I get it. it's yes, a legal move. exactly. And here it goes. Oh wow! Like I said, a six point five percent are here. Yeah, Real fact, they, pretty. Uh, what are you looking? Yeah, cocoa head there. Grim. Wow! You know I love myself some grim. Well, I know what you're segueing oh, into. New York brewery. Yes, I, I want you to to tr- tell us about your beers first. But we did have a very unique grim experience that we did promise the beer vendors at home about. And so, so yeah, we, uh, we we live up to yeah. our promises. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I have to re-listen to the show to remember what promises we made. But I, fortunately, <laughs> since I edit the show, I was able to do that. And I, and, and I realized, oh, yeah, we still need to do that. And we did. But let me have. Oh, did we here. ever? Yes, you should in- ensure the quality, of course. Oh, this is this is fantastic. This is uh, mm. the, the, oh, it's, nice. it's, uh, I will often uh, go for a higher ABV, but this one is just like it's just just a nice full bodied, good oatmeal porter. Uh, mm-hmm. that vanilla, I have the hint of vanilla, but it doesn't like tilt it too much into overly sweet. It's, uh, it's really good. Oh. oh, fantastic. I do love me some Grimm. I miss Grimm. I, although I, there's a place here in, in Fresno that I might be able to get some Grimm. There's a, it's actually called the, uh, the shell station. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah, really? The, Mar- <laughs> the Maroa Shell. It's like a shell station, but it's a craft beer place where you can they get beer from out of out of town. So they have other. Cal- I've seen other half there. I don't go there a lot because I like to go for local stuff. But um, I should go back there and see if I can find some Grim. I haven't had a good Grim in a while. I'm looking at their Insta now. I, I don't see this one. Yeah, this is uh, it's it's uh, they had it on tap when we were at the room yesterday. Like Grim, as is often the case, has so many great things on tap. Oh my it's gosh, hard to, hard to really pick. They had a few like can and bottle pours that I almost did, but I uh, I have this weird thing with me where I like it. if there's enough good drafts, I will not get a can or a bottle pour because I figure I can do that. Yeah, at home. of course, of course. Yep. Uh, so, uh, uh, but but speaking of we, your trip there yeah yeah so we do need to cover like the the the, the beer elephant in the room which is that on the last uh, beer cast we did talk about this concept of brulee beer and yes. uh and it, let's remind the folks at home what a brulee what, what what exactly this entails well uh brulee beer is where you 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 pour the beer and i guess it's uh specifically the reason it's called brulee it's very similar to when you see creme brulee because with creme mm-hmm. brulee, you know, they sort of they 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 put the little uh, fire on the top, so they have that crust of like the caramelized yep. sugars. With well, this, takes a similar technique, except they have this sort of hot poker that is called a uh, bierstallen. Uh, mm-hmm. It doesn't look like it from the spelling, but we were assured nope. by our, our our friendly beer tender yesterday that's what it's called a bierstallen. And so they take it and they just sort of plunge it into the beer, and the foam goes way up and has just like this big uh, like head that's a little the, that has a bit of warmth to it and the mm-hmm. beer itself is not i mean it it's a little warmer than your average beer but it's not hot it's uh yeah. it's kind of like the temperature of a cask ale 
Um, and uh, and if you want to like see some of the process, uh, we did film uh, the guy uh, uh, doing the whole thing yesterday, as well as what the final product looks. And that's on our Instagram. Mm-hmm. And uh, check that out because it was a really unique experience. And I wound up doing it with the uh, Grim du- Double Negative, which is a personal favorite uh, for me of their Imperial Stouts. Yeah, I, I was so impressed that it was like the that the beer stayed cold, but the head first off, it created this insane head on the beer, like three yeah. inches, three fingers with a head. It was wild. Um and and the beer stayed cold while the head was sort of like a little bit warm. So it was this weird yeah. thing. And it really did taste like kind of marshmallowy, kind of like that like yeah. creme brulee top to it. Um and you know, they were recommending, I think the our beer tender did recommend, uh, you know, say there were a bunch of beers that they had listed that this was good with, but one that, that he was pushing was that barley wine, which we did ju- choose not to go with. Um, but right. I thought it was a, a pretty was double negative, a, a, double negative. Yeah. They also have a single, yeah. I, I had a, I had a regular part of the single negative, but that, mm-hmm. yeah, the double negative is the one that I chose to use for the brulee. Basically they have asterisks on the menu for all the ones that are eligible for it. And mm-hmm. uh, they're all eight ounce pours, and uh, yep. the uh, the the brulee treatment has a three dollar surcharge on it. Okay, yes, so okay. pretty reasonable. I mean, what the, what they go through? It's like a red hot poker, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. They, they got like three of them the set beer, up behind so. the bar. Like if you order it, you have to wait for a minute for them to warm up the poker. <laughs> yep. And then oh, okay, uh, so they're not they're not pre warmed. They have to, have no. to warm it up. <laughs> No, they they turn a little propane thing on. They're warming, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what an insane thing to have behind the bar. Yeah, I guess if somebody comes in to rob you, you're like, oh, okay, one second. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> warm up the poker. <gasps> Can I get you a beer first? Hang on. So, <laughs> not what is that, the result? I mean, choose. what you you like the the change the flavor or you still got that double negative because you've had double negative before yeah right? uh i i i mean it didn't it obviously the flavor of the head was 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 a little bit different because it was it brought out more of the sweetness and it was a little warmer uh mm. but drinking the beer it was i it was fairly similar like i said it wasn't it wasn't quite as warm as a cask ale but not as cold as straight out of the tap yeah mm-hmm. of course i mean it's got a red hot poker shoved into yeah. it yeah I just yeah. like saying that. Yes. Well, that's precisely what way, happened. That is what it was. If, if I may read the description of your beer, Captain. Mm. I, oh, yeah. The, the oatmeal one? The one now? Love is everywhere? Brewed, brewed in homage to Pharaoh Sanders, the giant of spiritual jazz who left the material plane this fall. Are you getting a spiritual jazz from this? Sure. This yeah. One? I mean, it's not let, like the freeform jazz that I get from that Schwartz beer from uh, Single Cut. Oh, my gosh. Right. <laughs> right. Well, that's well, what you I'm immediately made me think of. They have their, their freeform jazz odyssey. They're, uh, they're, you know, who knows? Maybe that's when we have the Single Cut guy and he'll give us one of those. I mean, no, freeform and maybe. spiritual. They're on the same plane, I think. Uh, I think so. Love is Everywhere is a rich oatmeal porter infused with Madagascar vanilla beans. Yeah. Ooh. We used oats three ways malted oats flaked oats and golden naked oats Ugh. to lend a silky mouthfeel. The vanilla is notable and yet this porter is eminently drinkable, rich and soft without tipping over into being too sweet. 6.5%. Wow. I'm wow. Like jealous. I want that. It's really good. That I'm not a big vanilla guy, magical. but he says his vanilla is, uh, is subtle. Are you getting uh, vanilla? I Oh, I definitely getting the vanilla. Yeah. Oh, it's there. Okay. Uh, it's 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 it is subtle, but it's infused with it. Oh, lovely! And lovely. I uh, after the last episode, I'm never again going to say that they're sold out of something. As far as I know, you can still get this stuff there. Uh, but sometimes they got a special when they've got a tasting for something. They got a special place for that. It's a featured beer. Uh, mm-hmm. The the Lot Gill is in the international section. Uh, unfortunately, they they do not have a specific Irish section in there. So, the, oh, the indignity! The beer from the uh, Republic of Ireland has to sit in the UK section where it doesn't oh, belong. Oh, that is yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> rude, <laughs> There's, rude. Those ears are s- steaming in the can. But uh, uh, they have so limited you, space there, so don't give them a hard time if you see that there. This Grim was a uh, was also a, 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 a sponsor port, so that's yeah, well, great. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's really nice. They're treating you well over there at the. Uh, oh, you bet. At the uh, Beer and Cheese Collective. Well, I mean, that's a great thing about the provider is that she uh, she knows what Beer Wonder and I like, 
And if mm-hmm. she gives us something a li- that she thinks it might be outside the the range, it's like, do, 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 do they like this one? Do, like, yeah, it, it, probably not. Don't, don't give beer wonder a sour unless you really think he needs nope. to have it. <laughs> yep. They're, That's they're accurate. Is she going to yeah. send something to the pale mail? I don't, you'll just have to come visit. Yeah. You know, I'm actually, there's a thing called, uh, I just noticed, saw this the other day where you, you go in your house sit for somebody, you take care of someone's oh. dog for a week. Okay. And they, and you just can stay in their house for a week. Yeah. It's oh. like this, this just like mutual thing where you go and, and live in their house, but you got to take care of their animal or, or what have you. Um, and you do it, you do it for free because you're going to be in their place for free. And it's like, you could go internationally and this kind of thing. So I'm oh, that's cool. that. But, uh, uh, out here in the Frez, mm-hmm. uh, if we've, if we're ready for the next thing, yeah, no segue. Sorry. Uh, you know, just that, jump uh, right in. Uh, Sutter, Sutter girl and I have started a new band, the Mickey Breaky uh, band. I was going to ask and, about that. Uh, yeah. Oh, so yeah, that's and, you've changed the name since the last time we were here. So it was going to be the Mike yeah, Burke. Currently, we're calling Bricky it brand. yeah the Mickey Bricky Band. It's not okay. my favorite name, but it's sort of sticking. What about the Burchichinos? Burch, the Burchichinos. <laughs> oh not my god, bad. not bad. I have to work on that. Uh, so anyway, the funny thing is that the music in Fresno and breweries mm-hmm. in Fresno are like interlocked. Like that's where all oh. the live music is happening is at the cool. breweries. So uh, recently we went to Summer Fox, which is a brewery out here. I still haven't had a beer from them because they don't can. So I need to get a crowler or a growler from them. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I'll have to put that on my list of things to do. They have a wonderful uh, uh, black lager Schwartz beer that's called uh, uh, mm, something night with a K. Night. Okay. Excellent. Excellent uh, black lager. Really good. They're a very good brewery. But my friend Jason, if I mentioned him uh, here, is a brewer from Graveview Brewing, which is also a Fresno brewery. But they're actually brewing out of the Summer Fox Clovis oh, uh, wow. space because Summer Fox is in Fresno, but they have a space in Clovis where they had all these fermenters and bright tanks and and uh, mash tons, but they weren't using them. You know, they had them set up. Mm-hmm. And so Graveview went in and said, can we? And it's now the home of Graveview Brewing. So we went in uh, to do the open mic there, uh, uh, Cider Girl and I. And as soon as we walked in, I saw Jason. I'm like pointing. He's like going like this, like, <laughs> you want a beer? <laughs> so he poured me a beer out of the out of the uh, bright tank. Oh, like, wow. As soon as I walked in, I'm like, oh, that's great. Yeah, it was a nice hazy IPA. And uh, that was just so cool. So we got to have a and, and his partner is also named Jason. So they're the Jasons. Mm-hmm. I don't know. They, why didn't they call it that? Um, but uh Grave you brewing there. They don't have a tap room, but they're, they're here in Fresno and they're making really nice uh, beer. So, uh, Oh, they told us about an apple beer they're making, Ooh. which is technically a beer because they're using like some grain and some hops, <laughs> but it's really apple forward and they're going to bottle it. So hopefully when that one comes out, I we put that on the, have that on the podcast. That would be good. Uh, but uh, it was just a fun night of of just knowing that we knew people in beer, we knew people in music. It was just a perfect night, and the audience like really reacted to us playing, and it was just a just a cool time uh, over at the Summer Fox Brewing. So uh, we're fitting in pretty well over here in the old Fresalicious, if you will. Excellent. Yeah, I was I was starting you know, to worry. Clovis that... is a different town, but I, I was starting to worry <laughs> that uh, that the reason you you didn't like Vanjie's of Sharon was that it was too close to home because, you know, to me, one of the things that they did really well was talking about the, the loneliness of living in a small town. Uh, ah. the, and like, I, I thought it's, it's people like to glorify the whole small town, but I think that movie talked a lot about how, uh, you know, how, how it's hard to find a friend in a small town. And if you do, uh, uh, where do you find well, another one? And everyone the, knows it. Uh, yeah. You know what? What? Because because it is a, a beautifully filmed, excellent acting, and the script is actually pretty good. Yeah. But the the story itself is a heightened, uh, or it's a heightened reality, right? Because sure, it's that's not, true. It's it's done as as realism, right? Mm-hmm. But it's hard to swallow the things that happen as realistic yeah and that's the point 
yes. in a lot of ways. Yes. Because it's has it's a I don't want to give it away for our audience, but you know, there's certain <laughs> things that happen in the film that are like, what did he just do? You know. So it's like, um, you know what I'm talking about. So yeah. uh <laughs> it's a it's a metaphor for the Irish Civil War. Right. Uh, or war in general. Like why do these civil wars happen where we should all just get along, but we we don't. And so I get that, but uh, maybe yeah, I'll watch I, it again because there is a certain. It does stick with me. I do. I do think about it. And I, I, do, I, I, I think the ground. I loved. Per- yeah, I loved the actor uh, 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 who played the main character, Colin. Uh, famous guy, Colin, Colin Farrell. Farrell. Yeah, uh, he was that guy. Absolutely wonderful, because he's such a star. Yeah, he's a. He's a, uh, uh, would you call him a, uh, what do they used to call it? A uh, sex symbol. Sure. Like he's a yeah. good looking guy and he just, he's in a lot of action this, movies, but yeah, but, but he was he so just great. He plays this very simple man, like yeah. purely like simple guy, not simple in the way that he's stupid, but just a, like the Leonard Skinner song, simple man. Yeah. And, uh, I'm making all kinds of references today. So, you know, it was just the uh, the whole thing with the thing that happens is like, uh... yeah. I, I guess I guess for me, because Brendan Gleeson had such a grounded performance, that made the absurdity seem all that much more absurd because he seemed to be a sane person who made sense, but he was doing all these crazy things. Yes. and it would have been easy for an actor to lean into lots of like re- like actual craziness, uh, and uh, and and. When he's when and when he's talking, everything he says seems to make sense, even though he's certainly a person who has mental problems. Sure, he'd have to. <laughs> um, have you seen the movie uh, Beer Beer Wonder? Why are you right. even asking this, Hawk? So I'm I'm, 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 I'm going to move beyond this and say well, that look, uh, you're in showbiz. <gasps> I was in showbiz. Show that's right. We need to do a whole episode about Beer Wonder and uh, Beer Wonder. Like, my, like, my, like, my, my my lack of film knowledge, culture, escapism. <laughs> I've been necessarily from, from it all. Culture. I did mention you guys. I've been really impressed lately with going to various movie theaters and mm-hmm. uh, indie movie theaters are really stepping up as far as having a great beer selection. Uh, some of them, I think, have been doing this for a while, but now there have been a couple of laws uh, that I still don't quite have my head wrapped around. And I think a, a friend of mine is a bartender at the quad theater and i may have him right. on the show to explain those laws oh, again quad, yeah yeah because apparently when the nighthawk cinema first opened up uh the first nighthawk now there's two of them uh when the first one opened up in like 2011 they managed to get some laws passed that helped them do what they do which is probably oh, wow. also part of which is probably part of why alamo draft house finally decided to open in new york city right, right, right. Uh, but that had mostly to do with being able to serve beer to your seats uh, the new mm-hmm. thing that started up a couple of years ago that Beer Wonder you mentioned on when it first happened, I think was right. more about them being able to sell it at concession stands. Yes, um, yes, 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 yes. And, and that's as far as I'm going to say because we're already over an hour into this. And I, I, I but I, I, I do want to talk about uh, give people the best uh, advice as far as what if you're trying to mix your beer and your cinematic experience. I think uh we can do that always do that well on our couch but if you're going out to the movie theaters there are certain places that will do that really well for you um and so uh unless anyone out there has a better name for that segment we're going to start calling that picks and pints uh i told huck he could write a song about it if he wanted to uh picks and pints pinks and pints but funny uh, thing is i did a google search for it. no one else is using it there are a few places who did it about like okay. going to a bar and taking pictures of your pints but no one has done it with regard to cinema mm-hmm. And okay. I think it's a better, better thing. Yeah. Now the quad theater, uh, people don't, if you don't know, if you're not in New York, I went to the quad for the first time in 1990. Oh, yeah. wow. So the quad goes way back. I mean, that goes back before then. I think I uh, saw boys don't cry there with you and cider girl. And we had to sit in the front row. <laughs> oh, really? yeah. I think we like, we had dinner at the old town tavern. Uh, and then we got there kind of late and it was like a Friday night and it was a really popular movie. And the only place we could get seats was like way up front where we had right in the front. Like oh, you know, I don't, I'm sorry. I don't retain that memory, but I remember the movie. Yeah. And seeing it in the theater. I'm sorry. I don't remember that we went to the quad, but the quad, uh, cause I saw the movie Henry the fifth. Cause we were at the, okay. uh, the Shakespeare conservatory and Henry the fifth was the first Kenneth, Bra- Kenneth Branagh movie. 
and uh, set his career uh, on on the track it's on. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, goes way back. We were we we were going to Shakespeare school at the time, so it was it was a super important. Yeah, movie for us to see tennis balls. I don't know. You know that one sticks. With no, me. no, I, I remember that. <laughs> I uh, I uh, I was I think I was in Tennessee when I when that came out and I saw it. No beer involved, uh, but uh, yeah, I just remember thinking, "This is it. This is what everyone's so excited about." Don't, don't get know. us on a Tennessee Jag. With the show's over now, so. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I mean, well, we, we, we'll I pick mean, that I, up on the next episode. Uh, but no, honestly, there was the eighty nine ninety, and uh, the theater I was working for there did the Rocky Horror Show, which oh, I guess okay. is illegal to do in Tennessee now. So, wow. like, literally, oh, wow. Tennessee yeah, is true. less. Tennessee is now less progressive than when I was there thirty five years ago. There you go. That Congratulations, sure. Tennessee. <laughs> it's, re- it, I mean, it's absurd, but yeah. you know, also very unconstitutional, everything they're putting forward. So, uh, it shan't stick in the long run, but, uh, in the short run could hurt a lot of people. Uh, yeah. that's about all I, we should say about that. I, 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 know, I, you I know you said it, sh- I, you said it shan't stick for a moment. It sounded like it chants dick. <laughs> like that would be like, Oh, <laughs> you, you chant dick. But that's not a real thing, but it, it could be. Anyway, you were saying. Well, I, I I did want to just mention that I believe there are some mild hookups that need to be addressed sure. in order for us yeah, to yes, keep ourselves yes. honest. Let's yes, to them. yes. Uh, yeah, right. A few days before we recorded this, uh, hookups, no- hookups, hookups. Uh, we were, uh, Belgian babe just got around to listening to the, the last couple of episodes last week and mentioned that there was, there was a uh, one point where we were trying to figure out how to, uh, tell Nutpool, you know, the various rumors and what we're going to do about the rumors. Yes. And I was trying to come up with a word and the word I was trying to come up with was dispel. And Huck came up with a pun on that, and he said "dispool." But I was so happy he was thinking the same word I was thinking. I didn't even hear that he said "dispool." So if you heard, we want to acknowledge that Huck did something very funny that none of us noticed while we were doing. Thank it, you. So. I don't recall it myself. So yeah. Well, she insists that yeah. what that's what you heard. I can go back It'll to the masters, but I probably won't do that. Uh, the other thing was there was one point where we were all very impressed with Nutpool's description of a beer. And he was yes. saying, is that saffron or is it something else? Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know what the two things. Uh, well, Belgian Babe realized that Nutpool was actually quoting a lyric from a Sweeney Todd song. Wow. Mm. And none of us knew it. So for those other, if anyone other than Belgian Babe heard that and you wondered why we didn't know the references because uh, our thick heads didn't, wasn't, weren't, weren't attuned to that musical theater. Uh, We're not big Josh Groban fans, apparently. No, I'm a fan of Sweeney Todd, but I'm not a fan of Josh Groban. That's a reference to he's on. No, he's he is. You're right. He's in the new one. Uh, I've seen it a couple times. I don't. He's I I don't. He seems like a very nice person. That's all I can. I saw the uh, the uh, the version with Patty Lapone and me too. uh, Oh, you saw? We might have seen it together. Yeah, Uh, I also saw the one that was like uh, "Boys Don't Cry." (laughs) Yeah. Well, there's, there's a. I, I also saw it at a theater uh, right around the corner uh, from the Blind Tiger to, to, to oh. loop it in what we're talking about. The uh, Barrow it. Street, not Barrow. Was it, is the Barrow Street Playhouse? Is uh, isn't it's it the? Yeah, Barrow Street. Yeah, which is inside Barrow, that Greenwich. It's not Barrow Street. It's uh, Greenwich House. I may have the wrong name for it. It's yeah, like a little, uh, almost like an alley corner theater. Yeah, thing. what they they basically they turn the whole thing into a pie shop. So right. it's very like, oh, that's uh, great. I mean, still, and it came with snacks. There, there was a part that was generally a stage that, that they were in general, uh, but also part of the ticket. I, not, yeah, not only included snacks. You, you, you signed up. You could actually sign up for the non 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 dinner version, but if you got there, uh, if you paid a certain amount, you could get have there. Yeah, you could have a meat pie before the uh, before the show, and I, I believe I had a a beef Wellington. Yeah, as you should. Uh, and now, 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 of course, both uh, Nutpool and Belgian Babe are going to be disappointed. We couldn't remember the actual lyric from the song or what no, song it's from. I but, know, but uh, but that thing, saffron and something, was uh, is was yeah. I think I think someone was making a wig. I don't remember for sure. That but, that uh, makes a lot of sense. Well, because Sweeney was a barber, and so I guess there were yeah. wigs and dye jobs and that sort of thing. 
Uh, but beyond that, I, I just, I do not recall. Uh, mm-hmm. Another thing uh, I, I've noticed at a lot of bars lately uh, yes. is that a lot of them are, they're doing Boilermaker specials. Mm-hmm. It was strange to me because I saw this at like three different places over over like three days. Uh, and Boilermaker, for those those of you in the audience who, who do not know what that is, it I, I I looked it up because there are different versions of it, but it's basically it's a it's a beer and a shot, and it's usually a lager. Yes, yes. Uh, mm-hmm. And it is usually whiskey. Um, and there are several different ways that a boiler maker traditionally can be done. For some, a boiler maker is you just take a shot and then you sip the beer. Some where you actually put the boiler maker the the shot inside the beer, um, and that's right. its own thing. Uh, but one thing apparently that is not acceptable to be a boiler maker if you just sip your beer and sip the whiskey uh so so the 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 whiskey is supposed to be done shot wise but anyway i was i was at a place in astoria i when i was at the nighthawk in prospect park i saw they had a a, a, a boiler maker special when i was at the double windsor after i saw the movie there they had a boiler maker yep. special two days later i'm at kcbc uh they've got some kind of a beer in a shot thing uh, and I read that back again to the place that we went to after the the big tasting, the uh, Industry City, uh, the public house. They're having a special Boilermaker event on April Fool's Day. I assume oh, it's still real know. and it's not all an April Fool's joke, but that's something <laughs> that's something I think uh, we may in the future have to have a, a Boilermaker uh, episode. I'm I sure like it'll be- that. Everybody, everybody gets there and they're like, no, we don't have a whiskey license. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> you guys knew this. <laughs> but uh, it might it might be right up there, depending on what we choose. It might be right up there with our uh, uh, with our barley wine episode. That maybe we should all do a Boilermaker episode together. Oh God! Oh, no. oh, Is that for I, you, Beer I Wonder? In, I believe in us. I do believe in us. I really do. All right. Well, you, you've you've enjoyed whiskey on occasion, haven't you? It's not your. I have go-to, enjoyed whiskey. But- uh, no, and at at the big go away party, I had my first. Uh, what is it called? Irish where carbon. you drop the bail? Yes, that's the one. Yes, let's, uh, let's let's bring it full circle with the Irish theme today. Yes, you had an Irish uh, car bomb. Yeah, that was. I I did not like that. No, but you know what? Here's the thing. I am an adventurous drinker. I am the beer wonder. After all, we do have to represent for all styles of beverage. So, bring it on, gentlemen. All right, do quick we? quick kick to everyone out there. If you do decide <laughs> you want, to, you want... oh, you don't you don't beer. like the... we're we're here, we're here for beer. You, you don't you don't want to do a boil, you don't want to do a boiler maker episode. Well, huh? last time I did a shot was we were all together actually was um, we were at 18th Ward Brewing. Yeah, do you remember that night? Oh yeah, and we uh-huh. had tequila shots there I think. Yeah, and I was like, I don't do that, and, she, and the bartender was like, You're gonna. And she looked me in the eye like you're doing it. I remember that. <laughs> I was like, All right, I guess yeah. I'll do it. Yeah, peer pressure. Uh, yeah, bartender yeah, bartender yeah. pressure. Uh, no, I, I think uh, I, I think that could be a fun fun episode. Anyway, that's that's another thing. I see uh, I see we're getting a bit to the end. Uh, we've got a lot of fun stuff upcoming episodes. We teased a little of that, uh, and so mm-hmm. I'm not going to say it again. So you have to go back and rewind if you don't remember what I said, because that's what I'm going to do when I edit the show. Good. Uh, <laughs> and we, and Thank we hope to have the Grave View Brewing guys on as well with an mm-hmm. upcoming episode, at least Jason. So we got no, that'll be great. Uh, Grave View Brewing coming up. We've got uh, people from Single Cup Brewing coming up. So we've got a lot of nice fun episodes in the future and to make sure you don't miss anything if you don't make to make sure you don't miss anything where should people go look for us well basically just uh, the the the, uh the the at symbol and the beer vengers should get you just about anywhere i mean you'll find their way to our facebook to our instagram to our twitter i even think our tiktok is there uh on that we've put a couple of things on tiktok I noticed we've got a second TikTok video. Well, you know, when you, when, since you got eight, since you got eight hundred views from that first one, I figured like, well, I guess I should put <laughs> another one shot. on here. Yeah, uh, I don't think it has eight hundred yet. Uh, of course, TikTok yeah. could be uh, banned at any moment. I actually don't think it's going to be banned, but uh, uh, we'll see. Let's. I mean, that's another thing to get it. Jeez, we could just do it. We should have a political podcast. Uh, yes. Oh well, God. <laughs> well, like we said at the beginning, we are not. We are not a political podcast, but we are not an apolitical podcast. So what could we do? Like we a beer. Talk. Like we have. We have. What was it called? Uh, uh, picks and pints. Picks and pints. What picks and uh, pints and polls. Uh, pints and, and politics. Uh, pints and politics. rage we'll drinking. Wait, we'll get there. We'll get there. anyway. <laughs> I, yeah, I we, think we, Huck seems 
seems to be clutching that uke really hard. So I feel like yeah. we need to let him out of his misery. I'm holding this D minor. Like there's no <laughs> reason to hold this. Thanks for listening. <laughs> listening everyone. I, wait, yeah. My fingers work so hard. Take it all, easy. Just, all, live, just relax until it's time. Follow us on all the socials we just mentioned. Uh, or if you want to email us, you can send us that the beer vengers at gmail.com. Thanks, Huck. Thanks, Beer Wonder. Huck, uh, play us out, if you would. Always a pleasure. Look forward to the next one, guys. Oh, we're the beer, 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 beer Avengers. Beer, 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 beer Avengers. Beer, 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 beer Avengers. We're the beer Avengers. We're the beer, 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 beer Avengers. Beer, 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 beer Avengers. Beer, 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 beer Avengers. We're the beer Avengers. Oh, fuck yeah, my dude.